Welcome to the weekend. Welcome to the weekend. Also, welcome to the new year. Welcome to 2016. You did it. You made it. You made it to 2016. Did you believe this year would even happen? I got really excited there. Um, so here we are in 2016. Ooh. My neighbors are like hammering on the wall. <gasps> Anyways, um, here we are in 2016, like I was saying, and um, we made it, and um, I just feel really proud of me and all of us, and um, yes. I also, side note, I also feel really nervous because it's been a while since I have like, because I've been having, I had a really big like, words. It was a really big December, a lot happened, a lot has changed in my life very like quickly, as it tends to happen to me often. Um, so I'm not like surprised by that, but it, I love that it happens that way, but it's just, it's just been a lot to like, a lot has happened and it's lovely. And anyways, um, blah, blah. so I feel very nervous making a video, I feel like I missed you all very very much and I was sad to be gone for so long, but I'm glad that I took a break because I feel, I feel a lot better about it. I was having a really rough mental health, it has, my beard is itchy. Have I showed off my beard to you yet? It's very little. This is my little intersex beard though. I don't even think you can see it, but I hope you can. Anyways, um, <clears throat> I forget what I was saying. See, see, um, oh, mental health. That's what this topic is about. Did you know that? This whole week we've been talking about mental health now that it's almost Sunday. Um, Um, so my mental health was really challenging and hard to take care of for the last, um, like six weeks. It's been really rough. And so I needed to take a break to take care of that. And I was going through like bur creative burnout from being in, like being in school, making video and like being on this schedule. And then I like reached my holiday break and I was like, Ooh, I have to like collapse for a minute. <laughs> and so I did in a lot of ways. Um, so, um, I'm going to put a lot more, like, I'm going to talk a lot more at length about, like, what happened on my personal channel, so you can feel free to check that out. Um, link somewhere, probably below or around here. Um, but here we're talking about mental health today, so before I take up all the time with my rambling, let me talk about mental health and how it intersects with gender. Um, so, oh, they're pounding again. So the way I see it for me in my life is that I have had mental health problems since I was like a baby, since I was very, very young, like before I could walk. Um, and I have been forming my gender since I was born. And so I'm like, mm, in my head at least, it like logically makes sense that the two have been very much like intersecting, like parallel, like entangled in one another for the whole time. And a lot of my gender identity, like a lot of the ways I define my gender directly like coral or are directly part of my mental health and my like neurodivergence and like what it's like to be inside my brain. So um, what I want to share with you is I guess like my mental health diagnoses and how like how those have come about and um, a little bit more about like how those directly impact my gender and being trans out in the world. So, okay, my mental health, the things that I've been diagnosed with or that I have diagnosed myself with, um, is, um, complex PTSD or CPTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, in case you don't know what PTSD stands for. Um, that one I was diagnosed with when I was, I don't know, it's been a few years. I'm not going to I'm not going to use up time trying to remember years I, these were. <sighs> um, I'm not going to try and like remember all the years that I was diagnosed with these because I don't know. It's been very recent, like in the last few years, because for a long time, the only thing doctors were willing to really say was like, oh, you're definitely like anxious and depressed and sometimes suicidal. And I was like, yes, I know. Um, 
so it's just been the last few years that like I have taken it my mental health really seriously and that I have like demanded that doctors take it really seriously and so or I try to I'm not very demanding of mental health professionals anyways um so blah 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 so complex PTSD um which is be, like PTSD from like prolonged multiple traumas so from like my the first time I was physically abused that I know of was when I was six months old and so that is when PTSD started and then it kept happening like for a long 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 time and so it's not just like one healing from one trauma it's healing from like a like a couple decades of trauma um and then I was diagnosed um with borderline personality disorder um I will talk about this year this was in 2014 so I was like 25 and I was doing um, a partial hospitalization program where I was going to the hospital like every day and I did this for about five weeks in the middle of there I also stayed at the hospital for five days like in like inpatient care um and during this time they were observing like my how quickly my mood changes how rapidly I shift through things and like how centered around fear of people leaving me abandoning me that is and um I like my everything was consistent with borderline personality disorder it was a great way to explain everything but they also the here's the strange thing is that they told me like they diagnosed me with borderline personality disorder but then also told me that it wasn't a real diagnosis that it wasn't a real disorder that like it was like this catch-all phrase for things that they didn't know how to explain so they like gave me a diagnosis and then like took away the diagnosis in the same swooping hand and so for a long time i haven't like known how to deal with that like i didn't know if i should like claim it or not and then I've all then like for the past I don't know six months I've been like yeah I definitely feel that one like relate with that one highly but have been really scared to talk about it but now I'm talking about it so there you go I identify as having borderline personality disorder um more recently I've started to identify as also having dissociative identity disorder because I recognize a pattern of that disorder from a very young very very young age like big swooping personality changes from yes so um i self-diagnosed myself with dissociative identity disorder um and have talked about that a little bit on my personal channel i'll probably talk more about it as i learn more but it's very early and i'm still nervous to talk about it because it's it's oh uh, it makes me not have words. Um, speaking of not having words, I also have self-diagnosed myself with autism. And I've had some, like, I've had some doctors agree with me immediately and other doctors be like, no, you can't have autism because you have PTSD. Or like, no, you can't be autistic because you have intelligence. Or like, your IQ is this score. And I'm like, I've never taken an IQ test in my life. How do you know that? So anyways frustrated about that but um uh it's so helpful to have like diagnosed myself with autism spectrum disorder and to be like taking care of myself in the way that an autistic adult needs to care for oneself because I'm like I don't know it's like there are ways that neurotypical people and allistic or non-autistic people need to care for themselves but if an autistic person that were to behave that way it makes a lot of things worse so like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain that one right now, but like, uh, don't know how to explain the one right now, moving on. Anyways, I am, so having diagnosed myself with, having like done that, I did that like almost a year ago now, so like last February, March, I diagnosed myself with autism, and since then have learned so many ways to care for myself, have gained so much more like ability to recognize my emotions and recognize my needs and have become a happier person um and I've rec like it's so that is super related to with gender like super related I'll talk about that in a minute um I also have been diagnosed with ADHD and that one I'm like maybe maybe not don't know but probably 
Um, but I hate taking the medications that you're, that they give out for that. Um, they make me like stop eating and they make me not like, they make me not able to sit still or to like process. They just make me like, it's like wired. It's how I imagine it would feel doing, Never mind. Um, so anyways, that, um, I don't know, but I don't, don't know, that's all. Um, and then I have, but I told you I was diagnosed with, a, like, anxiety and depression all the time. Um, and that, I don't know, seems to affect a lot of life. Can't stop it from doing that. And then finally, um, eating disorder. This is another one that I like self-diagnose basically as having, I guess it's like a form of anorexia, but sometimes it's bulimia too because I throw up a lot, but not like on purpose. It's just like I get in, I could do a long, I need to do a long video about eating disorder, but I, can't, I need to move on because I have a lot to get through. Um... But that being said, like, that's another facet of mental health and physical health that is part of my gender, like, part of struggling with my body and my, I don't know, everything, life, being poor. <laughs> having an eating disorder very much relates to, like, having not a lot of financial resources. So, um, how this, like, it all intersects with gender, but it's hard to talk about how it does so much. For me, it's like my mental health is like uh, so much a part of everything in my life, like a way that my whole life has to be shaped for me because it's like I'm sick with PTSD and I'm like struggling to figure out ways to heal from that. And because of my gender,